We're talking today to Hardy Fox, a representative of the Cryptic Corporation, uh, in other words, a representative from the residents, and also Snakefinger, who's uh, touring for the second time, although the first time with the residents. Welcome to Australia. Thank you. Despite all the problems you've had of getting here, it's great to see the residents in Australia. I was really surprised, Hardy, that you're firstly touring in Australia because uh, it's pretty difficult to get the residents' records here. What made you decide to come to Australia? Well, my partner and I uh, sold Ralph Records. We were owners of Ralph Records. And we sold it and started full-time management of the residents. And they were wanting to do a show for their 13th birthday. And so we sort of said, well, you know, why just do a show? Why don't we take it somewhere? Where do you want to go? <laughs> so they wanted to go to Australia. Of so. all places. <laughs> so well, we're here. So it's the 13th anniversary tour. Although the band really didn't start playing live until, what, about 1982. Why is that? Yeah. Well, or the original concepts, first off, weren't really, didn't really allow for live performance, in addition to the fact that the way they recorded, they were so studio-oriented that they couldn't get the sound that they had, um, you know, live on stage. Mm -hmm. And about 82 came along the new digital processors, which allowed a lot more flexibility of stage sounds, and they started seeing the possibility of actually doing it. Even so, the live performances were fairly rare. Yeah. Um, how many shows, live shows, have they done since '82? Well, the tour in '82 was the Mole Show tour, and it um, it did about 32 shows in Europe, and I think seven shows in the States, and that was all. And uh, then this is the next tour and it's mm. now done Japan and the States right. and now here and then goes to Europe from yeah. here. So Snakefinger you're touring out here and playing bass with the residents. Guitar yeah. actually. Playing guitar, <laughs> yes. right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Last time you were out here it was a very short-lived tour. Can you yeah. uh, refresh our memories as to what happened? Well we were playing in Melbourne and um, we managed we played one gig out there and then one day I wandered out into the uh, bush behind Melbourne. I met a beautiful Aborigine maiden. We fell in love. She threw me over for somebody else, some Aboriginal guy, I believe, and uh, completely broke my heart. I had a massive coronary of some sort or another and ended up in hospital. That was actually a really rough time for you overall, I believe. It's, well, it's kind of rough being, being <laughs> unconscious for six weeks, but I had a pretty good time. You know, people were dying all around me and everything. Every time I woke up, a couple of other people had disappeared. And so Did I just went back to sleep look. again. Yes. Something that someone said to me the other day about the residence music is that it's ideal drug music. What do you think of that? That's a bit of a generalization. I mean, considering the very different sorts of drugs there are, you know, I mean, it would, if it was the sort of drug music for one kind of drug, then it probably wouldn't be the kind for another kind of drug. So you'd have to be a bit more specific. Did you have any drug in mind? <laughs> uh, no, I think just generally hallucinogenic type I drugs. I don't think that the residents, you know, think, well, which sound would make, you know, the best thing to hear while while stoned, <laughs> but I mean, maybe they do. <laughs> but uh, they do think in terms of which sound would be the most surprising, or which sound would would be um, would be you know the most interesting at this point, or something. So, someone who perhaps was stoned, particularly listening on headphones, <laughs> might react similarly. Personally, if I was on drugs, that that would be the last thing I'd want to listen to. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And there we have it, the residents and Snake Finger.
thought it wouldn't be nothing. No, it wouldn't be nothing. No, it wouldn't be nothing. No, nothing, nothing. him over the road and man man made the train to, to carry the heavy load and man man made the electric light to take him out of the dark and man made the, the boat for the water like Noah like Noah made the ark this is a man In this country and all over the world But man, man makes things Man makes things and, and he makes, he likes to make money So he can buy, so he can buy another man This is a man 